Welcome to ATB TV um, for this week. Uh, I'm Peter Morganti and running solo again as Darren busily runs around um, getting horses off to pre trainers, etc. etc. Um, this week I'm uh, filming or recording from the Ballarat Turf Club once again. We've got trials here uh, Thursday morning and uh, I'm up in the box where Greg Miles and Rick McIntosh do their best work. Terrific looking across uh, from the north back into Ballarat and down at the uh, the racetrack which it currently is uh, under um, a bit of renovating work. They seem to be digging the track up or scarifying it and filling it with sand. Apparently uh, the key there is to try and break that uh, clay based area that, which is pretty close to the top so that the track can uh, drain a little bit better. I think that's uh, the layman's terms for what they're trying to do. As you can see they've got the tractor with the big sprinklers on there but you can see the colour of the track it uh, just looks like it's the middle of the desert or Mount Isa or Birdsville race track but in fact it's just been scarified up and that uh, colouring is basically the sand that they've filled into the scarified areas. Like I said, they're just trying to break into that clay area. And uh, hopefully by mid-January when we're back here racing, that'll be a beautiful green surface. The other major works here at Ballarat Racecourse is the stall area. As you can see now, there are no stalls. Just a lot of work going in place. So uh, you can sort of see here the big trees where they used to, horses used to parade. Um, it's all gone and work is in place, so plenty of activity. We'll probably do um, today's TV in a, in a couple of segments. Uh, I'm off to Warnable Races later on today where we have Manor Trust and White House Affair both first up. So, um, yeah. Both probably going to need the run. What else? Affairs probably a little bit more advanced than Manor Trust, but uh, we'll see see how that unfolds. And what we might bring you bring to you today, especially for new owners that may not have seen it, is uh, what we do post race with the jockey, with uh, just his word on the race, just to see if that actually adds up to what we actually see as as owners. So uh, stay tuned to that. Once I get down there, we'll post and add that a uh, bit of bit of vision and uh, audio to uh, this week's ATV TV. Um, so I just scan over to see if trial four is not about to start. No it's not so we've got a few minutes to get through some results from last week. Uh, we go all the way back to last Sunday where Grand Arrow had his first run for new trainer Damien Batters at Clare. Um, it was a run where it was a bit of a, a bit of a look and see. Damien uh, hadn't had the horse for that long, so it was a bit of a run around trial, uh, see how we go. Crystal Bishop Road. It was a pass mark. He he uh, jumped well, posied up, but just probably found that they went a little bit quick for him over the 1200. You know, he held his ground going to the line with actually out making any ground on on the leaders, but he didn't lose any. Um, Damien indicated that we'll now push him out further in distance. So, uh, yeah, look, that was a pipe opener. Like I said, it was uh, it was a pass mark, and we push forward with Grand Arrow for now. Uh, also on Sunday, you can't be um, ran at Swan Hill over a mile again. Um, he's improving all the time. This bloke, he he just uh, he bats long at the one one pace, uh, jumped, settled just behind the lead. Dean pushed me to the race at the at the top of the home straight, the big long straight there at Swan Hill and look he held his ground all the way to the line and you know if anything was going just as well as the winner and the second horse he was only beaten a bit over a length so I think the plans now might be uh, to push him out to you know 1800 or 2000 and if he keeps improving the way he has in his three or four runs he should go very close next start. Uh, on Monday I went to Swan Hill and uh, we had a winner there from our three runners and uh, I was able to break my tipping hoodoo which pleases me. Um, Darren Dance will probably just say oh yeah you tipped a favourite but uh, the best part apart from my uh, tipping the winner was it was fantastic to see Shiny Lass win. Um, she's a filly that ATB have had a lot of time 
for over the journey but uh, at a third run when she injured herself that looked like all coming unstuck but you know it's been it's been a, a little bit of a battle this prep to get her up to uh, her right trip and fitness but she showed that she's a gutsy little thing and despite sitting three wide um, from barrier 14 on Monday she was just simply too good she surged the lead um, at the top of the straight you know another strong ride from Dean he wasn't going to he wasn't certainly going to let uh, happen what happened at Kilmore there was no way she was going to get caught up or boxed up inside runners uh, you know she was there to be beaten but she toughed it out and won by a length on the line and you know congrats to all you owners it was fantastic to see her win of course she's a a half to one of our very good horses in shiny buttons and also Xurious so um, there's plenty of uh, you know nice bloodlines there and hopefully she can uh, kick on if she can be half as good as her uh, older two older half brothers well uh, the owners are going to have a little bit of fun with her in the future Let's check back over again and they're still they're not ready yet we'll uh, move on to the other two um, that ran uh, in the benchmark 64 1400 and Swizots ran second and Koteka ran third. We were uh, probably a head and a, a neck away from uh, finishing 1 2. Um, Craig Robertson on Trick and Treat. Blouse as he ran, come down the outside. I didn't even see him in my vision. I was focusing on our two, but uh, look, they both ran well. Swizots was only having her second run after 14 months. She backed up her first up effort with a really good effort. Young Geordie Grob rode her well, brought her into the race at the 200. Look, she just found one too strong, you know, over the last 20 or 30 metres. And Kaya Tika, look, she cut the corner, probably ended up in the worst part of the track, but Dean was sort of, you know, was just left uh, having to go there. And look, under a lot of riding, she kept finding and Look, that'll top her off nicely. She, she, look, she was only beaten, like I said, half a length tops, and she's ready to go on and win a race. Um, in fact, they both are. Uh, on Wednesday, we had two runners. We had Girls Save for Trevor Bailey up at Ipswich. Now, it's a very heavy track up there, and look, I don't think it suited the mare. She, uh, she was only, she was ran four, she was only beaten a couple of lengths, but look, at no stage did she look comfortable in the in the home straight and you know she got a bit of a buffeting on the line and there was a bit of a thought that they may protest against the uh, third horse but they let that go look best part about that is she's had another run we've got the second run out of the road and look she'll go to a firmer track next start and be awfully hard to beat in a similar grade we also had intravenous um, racing at uh, Sandown and she ran up to her form from her previous two starts where she ran fourth at Mooney Valley. She finished off well to, to run third. Uh, the winner won reasonably comfortable, but, uh, comfortably, but she finished off, like I said, well again. Um, on the home turn, uh, Harry in his post race thought he was going to win. I just wonder whether the new whip rule, this is just a personal opinion, whether she suffered a little bit from it, Harry was itching to, to get into it at the three and four hundred, and of course you can only hit your horses um, five times before the hundred now. And uh, she's always been a horse that's take, taken a little bit of riding, and uh, you sort of have to get into her um, you now to get the best out of her. Yeah, while she did travel well to the corner, um, I just reckon around the three or four hundred. It was almost like she was waiting to be hit and Harry was wanting to sort of get into her a bit more and I think if you notice if you watch the replay that uh, the final 100 metres when Harry was able to get right into her she was probably doing her best work you know to the line. Now I know she did come back from 16 to 15 and you know, possibly that may be a reason why too but uh, the fact she travelled so well into the straight um, and it was just a bit of thinking time there for both horse and jockey and I just wonder whether that just may have um, I don't think she would have beat the winner, but she might have finished the length closer if Harry was able to uh, let her know that uh, there was business to be done at the 300. And with that, we'll have our little um, little feature, like I said, for you new owners, and you may not be aware of what we do post-race. We'll, uh, we'll catch a little grab of Dean Yendall uh, after one of the two runners, whether it be White House Affair or Manor Trust, and just... Uh, give you an insight on what the jockeys give us post-race and see if it matches up with what we see or whether they come back with a few little white lies but um, it'd be interesting viewing I know Dean's not real, real wrapped on videos being shunted in his face but we'll put him under the pump this week and uh, just see how he responds
Peter from ATB here at Warrnambool where we've just seen Whitehouse Affair run uh, fourth, just pipped for third. Looks like she may have just, just peaked late. Um, seemed to get a good run in transit, though. Yeah, no real excuses, Pete. Like, um, she began where I was asked to go back, which I did, and give her a bit of cover and get it to my own. I thought 100 hours she might have been here peaking on a run. Um, I thought at one stage she was a real good chance, to, uh, if not winning, uh, the way she was travelling, but just didn't seem to find more. Yeah. I think she'd be better for that run anyway. Yeah, Thanks, Dono. Yeah, good on you, mate. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see how she pulls up. But I think just from my eye, she just peaked sort of at the 100, which uh, probably only natural first up. She'll be better for the run. Stable will get back to us with a um, post-race probably in the next 24 hours. And uh, I'd say that was a tick the box. And we'll see what happens in the next fortnight for another run. Just looking forward to our runners uh, Friday and over the weekend. Um, we go to Mornington on Friday where social media um, comes back from running at the Valley uh, a couple of weeks ago and what well, similar sort of race but probably just a slight drop in class should suit uh, her and, and just the Mornington track itself um, can play two on paces and hopefully she can jump. She sort of half missed the start last start. Jump, put herself into the race and you know with any luck she can be fighting out the finish there. She's certainly got the ability. Um, well she's had five, six runs this prep. Uh, I think last start it was more her missing the start and just not being able to get into the race uh, more so than her you know, coming to the end of her prep. So yeah, let's hope that um, she can uh, put her best foot forward. Uh, ATP bloodstock agent Chris Blum will be down there and he'll have all the post race uh, analysis and so forth. Jockeys reports after that race. That night I'll be at Mooney Valley where Ticket the Tour app returns. Um, instead of drawing barrier one, this time we've gone to the car park. We've drawn barrier 14 or barrier 12. Um, Matty Williams is of the opinion that this, while well, four to eight would be the ideal barrier, it's going to play into uh, hands of actually riding the horse back a little bit and just trying to get him to to settle and then run on. Apparently, uh, well, in his, not apparently, in his trials, he's been settling a lot better now. That's probably coming with age, maturity. So, um, got Craig Williams on, so got one of the best. He would have done all his form. So, hopefully, from twelve, we can posse up. Uh, Matty, the trainer, is not worried if we're sitting three back in the running line as long as he's able to um, get out and run him. Um, the rail's back, it sort of suits swoopers when the rail's back. So with a bit of speed on, hopefully we can see Ticket to Turak returning to something like his best form. And it'd be great if he can uh, knock over that elusive city win. So uh, we'll be there tomorrow night, hopefully uh, seeing Ticket to Turak win. Uh, Saturday we've got uh, runners in three states. First of all we'll go to Randwick where we're sure is uh, third up. Um, probably just ridden a little bit, not so upside down, but just out of his comfort zone last up and trainer Peter Snowden sort of admitted that, that they just tried to edge him up into a position where he was a little bit closer but it probably just negated uh, one of his strengths and that's you know finishing off settling and then just getting home under his own natural sort of uh, foot and ability. So he'll be ridden cold this weekend and uh, ridden to run on uh, when Ona Costin stays on. So hopefully we see the real wear shore this week and uh, he should be right in that race. Similar, very similar sort of race as to what he's been competing against. Um, we then move to Morpherville where uh, Tintaglia runs around an 1800 metre race. Look, she's got her foot right on the till. She was uh, a terrific run last start. Um, the belied the run at Cranbourne where she didn't handle the wet. So back on top of the ground. Weather looking to be fine all weekend. Um, even hot, in fact. Um, she'll troop over to, to Morpherville and look, that looks an ideal race for her over 1800 metres and I'd be very surprised if she doesn't finish top three or, uh, or in fact win the race. So uh, best of luck to all you Tintaglia people. We also have two runners at Sandown. We have Broadway and First who will be tackling uh, a 1400 metre race. His uh, second go at it after... Um, what was a good run here 
Ballarat uh, on Cup Day. Just had to work a little bit hard. Michelle rode and uh, yeah, he was just a bit fierce, a bit new, sort of floated around a little bit. But look, in the home straight when she called on him, he was actually right in the race to the last hundred before he got a bit tired. So I'm tipping that that run under his belt. Sandhead should suit his style of racing and um, if he can just settle, get a nice run in transit, I'm just thinking he'd be uh, a great each way chance as well. Um, our other runner on the day is Firehouse Rock, who's had a bit of a freshen up. Uh, we've got away from um, Flemington, where he's just had uh, just ordinary runs right through his career, you know, whether it's circumstantial, whether it's just the track. The Hayes, um, Dabernick, Stable have just decided to skip Flemington altogether, which is good. Um, Caulfield's not on the agenda, so Sandin, where he has actually run well, he ran well, I think it was second up last prep. Flash time looked like he was going to win and uh, just pooed a little bit on his run. So, learned a lot of things since then, whether it's just a timing thing with the horse, but freshened up and back in grade, he should be a terrific chance uh, on Saturday as well. Just to finish off uh, this week's segment, as you can see, change of scenery, I'm, uh, I'm now at home. Um, and we have runners for Sunday and Monday through now, so we'll quickly just go through them. Chloe Anna uh, is at Geelong with young Ben Allen claiming two. Uh, this looks a nice race from her. She has drawn 10, but over the 2,400, you would think that Ben should be able to posse her up, uh, hopefully in the first half of the field. And, uh, yeah, look, all things equal, she should run well. She did run well at Ballarat. Um, it, it was a, probably a harder race than this, so... Just that little drop in class should suit her. On Monday we go to Terang where we have uh, three runners and three excellent chances. Rani Meteor in the 1200 metre race. Now he ran terrific behind Mert the Flirt at Ballarat on Cup Day. Um, just a, a, again back in grade at Terang. 1200 Damien Thornton. Uh, Barrett 10 but you get a pretty good run there at Terang. It's a big track. Titled the Flemington of the Bush, very similar sort of uh, dimensions as Flemington, so he he should be able to posse up in the first five or six and be awfully hard to beat. Uh, we have Arizona Girl having um, her first run for the Weir Stable. Now Darren's taken Darren Weir's taken her along quietly. She's been down the beach at Warnable. Uh, she's trialled up really well, and uh, with Dean Yendel on board from Gate Three, she'll be ready to go in that 1850 metre race. Uh, so look for her to run a really bold race first uh, go for Weary. And also the last Angel. Now she's been very consistent without winning. Um, got Damien Lane on, uh, 1400 metres. Again, a bit of a tricky gate in 12, but the fact that we're at Terang and uh, there'll be plenty of time to posse up, hopefully she can break through for a well-deserved uh, maiden victory. Uh, just looking a little bit further ahead, we have uh, My Obsession nominated for Sandown, a benchmark 70. Um, so we'll just wait for acceptances early next week for that. Obviously there'll be other runners, but uh, you know, there's uh, nominations not through for later in the week. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get uh, to those horses next week. Just before I go, um, we've had a website upgrade again. Um, been a few little issues. The best way I could probably uh, describe uh, if, if there's things affecting you, if you've got horses that you've been getting reports for, or horses that are going to be running around, say, this weekend, and all of a sudden you're not getting a report, please email me. No, actually, email Darren Dance. No, you better email me. The boss might, uh, might be too happy with a heap of emails this weekend. Just email me, peter at atbloodstock dot com dot au and uh, we'll fix the problem um, apart from that there should be nothing uh, any, any different visually when you log on or you know you get onto the website it's just a few glitches with communication that we hope to eradicate ASAP uh, we better do a few tips now that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, comfortable with my form being back I actually like three this weekend Tintaglia in Adelaide, I reckon she's a terrific chance over the 1800 metres. Um, Raining Meteor, I reckon just, just that slight backing grade third up will be hard to beat at Terang. And I do like Broadway and first each way on Saturday at, um, at Sandan. So go with those three, probably all each way um, chances so you can uh, put your money on and be quite comfortable that you'll get a return even if uh, 
you'll get your money back even if you run second or third. But uh, I'm pretty confident that uh, one of those will win, if not a couple or maybe all three. Have a great weekend and we'll chat next week.